Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how to set something up like this. This is a request I had from someone I was helping about making a bunch of columns with falling LED lights and how to set that up in a material. So let's dig in. We're going to just do this in the third person template. So when you start up, choose games third person and hop in here and just grab yourself some cylinders or a cylinder for starters. And we're going to go ahead and make it tall and skinny. If you want to turn off snapping, you can do that over here like that. Then you have a nice and smooth. So once you build your uh, first cylinder here, I'm just going to alt drag to make a couple more. So this will be the, the pattern we're going to use for our falling LED material. So let's go ahead and make a folder for our own materials here and let's create a material. Let's start first with the making of the LED band. So there is actually, you may not know this, but there is a generate band node. It's one of the more obscure kind of nodes. And you have a width. So let's go ahead and put in a variable for that. So hold one and click to put a single value here. And we're gonna right click, make it a parameter so we can adjust it from a material instance. And we'll just call it uh, O. I guess we'll call it band width. And we'll go ahead and plug that into our base color just so we can see that it's working. We got a lot of work to do, but uh, this will get us started. Oh, we also need a value here. So let's put in 0.1. All right, so there's a band. You can also switch your piece of geometry over to a cylinder conveniently to see our band showing up here. We have some other parameters here, but we're not gonna mess with those at the moment. We just wanna keep setting this up. Also for this material, the person wanted it to be glass with an LED going down, like, so kind of like a light bulb. So what we need to do is for this material, we need to change the blend mode to be translucent. And we're also gonna come down here, do, 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 switch this to surface translucency volume. All right, next uh, we want, because this is a transparent object, we want this part where the light is not to be clear. So we can actually take the same output for now. We may need to change it later depending on what we're doing, but we can plug that into the opacity. Where it's white, it'll be solid. Where it's black, it'll be transparent. And here it comes, there it is right there. Now one thing that seems to be new in 5.2 actually is if I come in here to the material, you'll see there's a refraction here for something to look like glass, it should have some amount of uh, index of refraction, but right now that is disabled. So again, I think this is new in 5.2. I don't remember this in previous versions that you have to enable it. So let's just do a search for refraction. The method is none. Let's switch that over to using index of refraction. So that's something, you know, scientific. You can look up uh, index of refraction table if you want glass technically. Now it, it kind of depends on what you want it to look like in the end, but 1.5 is roughly the index of refraction for glass. So I'm going to hold one and click and get another value here to plug into that and changing this into a parameter, clearing the filter. And let's go in here let's give the name IOR for index of refraction in case you want to change it out in the material. Notice when I add that and zero does something as well. But if we want to keep it roughly in the realm of physics, we'll put it in 1.5 and we get a cylinder. You can kind of see it starting to look glassish. It's going to look better on the narrow one. Again, it's relative to what you want it to look like. You can change it to be a different value. To, again, just what do you want it to look like? So we have transparency and we have a little bit of index of refraction. So let's next look into the idea of the moving light. So for the moving light, this generate band has input coordinates where you can modify your UV. So let's hold down U and click to get texture coordinates. And on its own, it won't really do anything. If we need it to move, we need a panner node. So hold P, click, and let's plug your UV, your texture coordinates into the coordinate of the panner, the output of that into your input coordinates of the generate band. And here's your speed values for X and Y. We really just need it to go in the Y direction. If 
that's the look in this particular case we need. So let's put in, uh, let's try one and see what happens. And we get some direction going to it. If this is supposed to be a falling speed, you can just negate that if you want, make it minus one, it'll go the other way. All right, so we're, we're coming along. Let's save this and see what we get so far. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and dock it next to my map here. Here's the material and I'm gonna shift select all of these. And I'll go ahead and make an instance, which is decent practice. So right click, create a material instance. I haven't named these, you know, you can name it whatever you want, that's fine. And let's go ahead and put the material instance into the material slot for all of these. And we get our, you know, glass with an LED band moving down it for starters. So now the request was to make these variable. So we want some random speeds on these and not to look uniform. So let's head back to the material. And for that, what we need is to vary. Remember that the speed is coming from this parameter here in our panner node. So what we want to do is use another node called random per instance random. And what this will do, this generates a value between 0 and 1 for instances. Now, unfortunately, there's two uses of the word instance. There's the material instance, which is what we applied back here to our material, uh, to our surface. That's not the instance. That's not the per instance, which is what this node is useful for. This is per geometry instance. So we'll talk about that in a minute when we get back to the geometry. But it generates a value between 0 and 1. So we want to vary this parameter here, this y speed, between a value of 0 and 1. So let's go ahead and do a multiply. Now it gets a little tricky because we really only want to multiply the y value. So let's go ahead and split out, set, set this up properly. Or, or proper is subjective, right? This is something that will get the job done. So I'm going to add single coordinate, single coordinate. This is going to be my x and y speed. So I'm going to convert this to a parameter for my speed. And I need a append node to put these two together. So append vector. This will put the x speed and the y speed values that I'm using here. I'm going to start with the default value of minus 1. And this would go into my speed input to take those two values here and here. Actually, if I want to be really specific, let's just be proper here and put a Y there. So your Y speed. And it's going to go at that particular speed. Now, this random value, we want it to randomize the Y. So what we're going to do is make a little space here. Now, for those of you who don't like math, you're a little out of luck because we got to do a little bit of math here. So here, this again, it's going to output a value from 0 to 1. So let's go ahead and hit a multiply node here and we're going to take this value of minus 1 and this will multiply it by a value between 0 and 1 so our overall randomness at the moment is going to be between 0 and minus 1 the 0 we probably don't want a speed of 0 right so that's kind of like eh, not quite ideal of what we want how about between minus 1 and minus 2 so let's go ahead and give a little offset to that. So let's set up a add node. So hold A and click. I know, a little more math, but you can handle it. So we're going to run this into here. Let's make another variable. And this is going to be our offset, our speed offset. So right click, convert to parameter. I know, it's, it's not that much math. Speed offset. So, and what I want to do here is at this node, remember it's from 0 to minus 1, I want to push it from minus 1 to minus 2. So, what I'm going to do is come here and for this speed offset, I'm going to put in a minus 1. And then, so now taking this into here instead, that will adjust the speed of our panner to be, I'll come back to this, per instance to be varying between minus one and minus two. All right, so save. 
Now it's random, but if we come back and look at our results here, we don't really see anything specifically random. That's because the same material is being applied on five unique independent cylinders. So what we need to do is make an instance setup of these cylinders. So these five individual cylinders are going to be instances and you'll do that by selecting them all. Go to actor, merge, batch, and you'll see it hides all of those cylinders. And this one is active and you're like, where did they go? It's causing them to recompile. But now we're getting some variation in our output. Okay, now if we want to make some changes, let's go ahead and open up the instance. And in the instance, we have set the ability to change the width of the LED strip, the index of refraction, our speed offset, and our actual speed. So we have our varying speed here now. If you go back into your original material, let's say you want, you know, for this span of UVs, you want more of the band. You want it that skinny, but you want more of them. So what you could do, again, these are just kind of playing with settings and the UVs and the materials, is you could scale your texture coordinates uh, with the tiling here. So you could do it by hand by adjusting it here, or you could also set up some parameters for that. So let's go ahead and set up two. We'll go ahead and convert to parameter, convert to parameter. We'll call this one V tile. And you can guess what this one will be called. The U tile. And we'll start with one and one. Well, actually, I'll double it while we're here. So this is just doubling the UV uh, scaling onto the geometry. Actually, I just need it tiling and Y, don't I? Because we're only going in one direction in this particular example. So again, I need a append vector to put those two values together so that we can then use those in conjunction with the texture coordinate node. We'll use a multiply, take whatever that is, and then we'll multiply the, the one and one that's coming out of here technically. We're going to leave that set to one because we're going to multiply by these values here and use those into our panner. So now you'll see the bands are closer together. For the extreme, if I set that up to five, we'll have a bunch of little bands together. So it's just something that you could have creative control over. Totally up to you. Now, if you want to get crazy tricky, you could use a per instance random driving a random value for the tiling of each individual column as well. So that's, you know, it's really up to you whatever you want to mix and match. But let's take a look what happens when we do a five times on our V tiling. We should have just a lot more going through there. And you can see they have varying speeds. And that was the result that uh, the person I was helping was looking for. So that's really all I wanted to show you here. Again, just in review, the things we were looking at primarily were this per instance random. And that was for each geometry instance, not material instance. And we use the generate band to uh, get the band going in the first place. And you can explore these other settings here if you want. Then we also have using an append node to put two values together to get it into a, uh, a two vector value. So the, the, using an append node is pretty handy. You could, one other thing we could do, you could start putting some value into the emissive if you want. You could take that same white band and you can add a molt. So you could take that, take that into the emissive. We could set up a variable here. I'll just do this. You already know how to do that, so I'll just do it directly in here. But you could set up a variable to make it uh, something you could control from the instance as well. All right, so that is today's little trickery for playing around with an LED falling cylinder thingy.